بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن ساق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحديث هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله ويا باك after a long break may Allah سبحانه وتعالى put barakah in the coming back inshallah so we will be moving forward inshallah with that which we uh, plan to be doing which is the tafsir of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the commentary of Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala and uh, we mentioned that we're going to go in brief inshallah and that's I guess what we have been doing so we continue with the same uh, 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 method and uh, uh, inshallah I hope you guys will be uh, what do you call it, taking note and remember the places where we stop without forgetting them thank you Abdurrahman uh, so today inshallah we will be moving from the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya bani israel adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa awfu bi ahdi ufi bi ahdikum wa iyaya farhabun is that, is that correct okay وَإِيَّايَ فَرْهَبُونَ وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَاكُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِهِ وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِي ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّايَ فَتَّقُونَ <coughs> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after narrating to us that which happened between Adam and his wife in one side and also shaitan at one side the journey of humankind to the earth so we have heard a lot and we also heard about that which we're supposed to do in order to succeed in this life and human beings are not going to be equal there are some who adhere to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the Muslims the believers the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and his companions and whoever follow them bi ihsan ila yawm din Allah says ihbitu minha jami'a fa imma ya'tiyannakum minni hudan fa man ittaba'a hudaya aw fa man taba'a hudaya فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ Allah says, come down the earth and whoever follows my guidance which means I'm going to send guidance to you and this is what happened. Allah sent around 124,000 prophets and messengers to guide people to, to righteousness to that which will make them alive and take them back to the original place where they belong to. Get it? We're not supposed to be here. Get it? The place which is the final destination it's either paradise or hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that we send down uh, people and we commanded them to follow the guidance. So what is the guidance? The guidance is the wahi, the divine revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to his prophets, whoever they are. So everyone is supposed to be following that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to him. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this mention, so he will talk about the Jew. And our topic today, we talk about them a lot. And Alhamdulillah, we're going to also be talking about them a lot. Because from now onward, almost until the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, around 49 pages, Allah SWT will be talking about the children of Israel. You get it? We'll be hearing about them from time to time. So sometimes we take a break and then we come back to them. Until the end of the Surah. You get it? But now... We're going to have a long journey with them. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did in this part of Surah Al-Baqarah is to remind the Jews about his blessings. Because sometimes if you remind a person about the favors that you have bestowed upon him, it might be a motivating factor for him to, to reflect and to do that which you want him to do. That's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them here. 
He says, Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. Wa awfu bi ahdi, awfi bi ahdikum ma iyaya farhabu. Ibn Kathir says, يقول الله تعالى عامرا بني إسرائيل بالدخول في الإسلام ومتابعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أفضل الصلاة والتسليم ومهيجا لهم بذكر أبيهم إسرائيل. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى is now addressing the children of Israel, commanding them to get into the religion of Allah سبحانه وتعالى to accept Islam because that should be the, 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 the what do you call the compensation of the favor of Allah SWT over them. He granted them, he granted them, he granted them. What will be the, the compensation? What will be the return? That they should get into the religion of Allah SWT collectively. But unfortunately they did not. That's why Allah SWT out of love, He's reminding them that this is what you're supposed to be doing. So He commanded them to accept Islam and to follow the Prophet wasallam. But how did he do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them through reminding them about their father. Who's their father? Israel. The Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yaqub is the one that is called Israel. You get it? Wahu Nabi Allah Yaqub alayhi salam wa taqdiruhu ayyabani al abd al salih al muti illahi kunu mithla abiyukum. Allahu Akbar. Actually, the meaning of what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying here is when He says, "Ya bani Israel, adkuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum." Remember the favor of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala over you, which should be the, the the motivation for you to accept the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling them here is, "Ya bani al Abd al Salih, all the all the children of al Abd al Salih, a righteous slave of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, al Muti'i lillah." The one who always follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kunu mithla abikum. Be like your father. You get it? We do that also. Kama na kuli, ya ibn al-karib, if al al-karab. You go to somebody, you're asking him for donation, he doesn't want to give, but his father is one of the most uh, kurama. The father is always given in charity. When you approach that stingy person, you tell him what? Ya ibn al-karib. Oh, the son of the Karib, please get involved also in the charity. So you're reminding him about the attitude of his father. Maybe it will motivate him also to, to do the same thing as the father. You get it? And uh, also you say, you say to the coward person, Yabna Shuja, Bariz al Oh, the son of the brave the person and the hero. Yaqi Tashaja, don't be coward. You get it. So you remind him about who the father. You know, people used to be proud of their parent and they don't want to imitate them. That's why a poet was right when he says, "In iftakharta bi aba in lahum sharafu, qulna sadakta, walakin bi sama waladu." If you are so proud of your parent, who are so great in the society, we will tell you, "Yes, you were right." But what an evil person they bore. You get it? You are the worst. You are supposed to be imitating them. Right. So sometimes you remind a person about the attitude of the parent to motivate him to engage in the same attitude because he's good. You get it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes you call a person who is totally ignorant. You get it? I mean, completely ignorant. And he doesn't want to engage in studying. You tell him what? Ya ibn al-alim. Come on, your father is a very knowledgeable person. Why can't you be like him? And on and on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, ذُرِّيَّةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَا نُوحُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا He reminded the children of Israel. He says, Ya ذُرِّيَّةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَا نُوحُ All the children of those whom we carried together with Nuh alayhi salam. Because you know, after the Tufan, the only one who lives, the only one who lives after Tufan was who? Was the one who was with Nuh alayhi salam. Right? And those people, almost all of them died. None of them produced a generation. That's why people have two, two parents to be related to. Those who are related directly to Adam alayhi salam, 
These are the people during the time of Nuh and are related to Adam directly, including Nuh alayhi salam. You have others who are related to Nuh then to Adam alayhi salam. Because Allah SWT says, وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِي We made his descendants to be the one who remains. They said those people who are with him, they don't produce children, they die. They went back to Allah SWT without leaving a generation with them. So others they're coming from Nuh alayhi salam. That's why you see the historian, they classified human beings into four different classifications. Those who are related to Sam, those who are related to Ham, and on and on what they said. The, the Asian and the Arabs and the Europeans, and they have this classification, which is nothing but just a classification of children. It doesn't mean racism, right? Because each and every one of us, anyway, we are referring back to, to one father. Who was that? Nuh alayhi salam, and he is going directly to Adam. That's the reason why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said, Allah has created Adam from three different types of clays, the mixture of three different types of clays, right? Red and the black and the white. You get it? So mix them all together. He says that's the reason why children of Adam comes in the way you see. It's hardly to find a person who looks like the other one. This one is white, this one is dark, this one is this, this one is that. You get it? And also they become with different manners. Look at people who are sitting in, I mean, next to us. Do we look alike? No. And when I say we look alike, I'm talking about the way we smile. Some of us don't smile. Of course, they smile from inside, but you, know, you get it? Always serious. Right. It's not a deficiency. This is who they are. He likes his face to be like that. Some of us are very difficult. Do you get an idea? You tell some people, go and ask so and so and so. They will tell you, give up. Before he even approached, he knows that he will never get. You have some, before you go, they give. So you have different attitudes. Some people are shadid, shadid because the earth, the clay also is like that. Some of the clay, they are very soft, very gentle. So those human beings who are created from that part of the clay, they become like that by nature. Some of the clay, they are very, very rigid and hard. You find those people who are from that, they will also be like that. The Prophet said, Kullukum bin Adam, wa Adam bin Turaa. But each and every one of them, or every one of you is from Adam, and Adam is from, from the clay. So who is Israel? Israel is, is Yaqub. Bi dalili ma rawahud, Abu Dawud at Tayalisi, and Abdullah bin Abbas in Qala, Hadarat Isabatun min Yahud in Nabi Allahi, Fakala lahum, Hal ta'alamun anna Israel Yaqub. Fakalu Allahum manam. The group of people, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, these people, they are from the Jew, from the children of Israel. They went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, do you believe, do you know, can you testify that Israel is Yaqub? They said, yes, Ya Muhammad. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma shahad. So the best opinion would no doubt Israel is who? Is Yaqub alayhi salam. Wa qawluhu ta'ala uzkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum qala mujahid ni'matullahi allati an'ama biha alayhim fi ma samma wa fi ma siwa thalika fajarra lahum al-hajara wa anzal alayhim al-manna wa salwa Mujahid, one of the greatest uh, uh, interpreters of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said this word uzkuru ni'mati allahi alaykum Remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over you. It means you should remember all of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one you know and the one you don't know. The one Allah mentioned to you and the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not remind you about that. Like what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits the ocean for them. You get it? They pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring down the man wa salwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he saved them from the, 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 what you call the punishment of their own and on and on. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to Abu al-Aliya, جَعَلَ فِيهِمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ وَالرُّسُلِ Allah made the prophets and the messengers from the children of Israel. Do you get it? The vast majority of the prophets that are mentioned to us, they are from, from the Yehud and Nasara. They are from them. That should be enough to be a motivating factor actually to, to push them up to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But unfortunately you are dealing with people of that kind. 
You get it? Having the prophecy in them, having the leadership. Allah gave you the prophecy. He gave them the kingdom also. Allah says. Allah He made them leaders, guided by the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they were patients. And they used to follow the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to listen to nothing but that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So they got all of these blessings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a book also. And on and on. And many, many things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them. So that's why Musa used to tell them, Uthkuru ni'matallahi alaykum, idh ja'ala fikum anbiya, wa ja'ala kum mulukan, wa atakum ma lam yu'ti ahadim min al-alami. When they were so wicked, and we're talking about uh, the, the, the Jew who claimed that they were with Musa alayhi salam. We're not talking about those people who did not accept Musa, and we're talking about those who are with Musa alayhi salam. But look at how they rejected him badly. He used to tell them, لِمَ تُؤْذُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ why did you, why do you harm me all the time after knowing that I am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you? And he used to tell them, Udhkuru ni'matallahi alaykum. Remember the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over you. Ijjala fikum anbiya. And Allah made you prophets. Allahu Akbar. Wa ja'alakum mulukan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you muluk as kings. You get it? I granted you leadership. Wa aataakum malam yu'ti ahadam min al and Allah SWT has granted you that which He did not give anyone amongst the, the people of the universe. That should be more than enough to convince them that they shouldn't go against the law of Allah SWT. قَالَ وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِ أُوْفِي بِعَهْدِكُمْ قَالَ بِنْ عَبَّاسٍ بِعَهْدِ الَّذِي أَخَزْتُ فِي أَعْنَاقِكُمْ لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ كِذَا جَاءَكُمْ عُنْدُزْ لَكُمْ مَا وَعَدْتُكُمْ بِتَسْلِيقِهِ وَاتِبَعِهِ بِوَضْعِ مَا كَانْ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْإِسْرَالِ وَالْأَغْمِنَ الْإِسْرَ مِنَ الْإِسْرِ وَالْأَغْلَالِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ فِي أَعْنَاقِكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ الَّتِي كَانَتْ مِنْ أَحَدَاتِكُمْ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ إِبْنَ عَبَّاسٍ says Allah سبحانه وتعالى says أوفوا بعهدي fulfill the promise and the agreement between me and you أوفي بعهدكم I'm going to also fulfill my promise for you الله أكبر Allah doesn't need that the Jew and whatsoever they have Allah سبحانه وتعالى can turn them upside down but look how lenient is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those people. But still, they don't want to accept. I mean, Allah, does He need to tell them, do it and I will do mine? He doesn't need that. But just to help them, to remind them to accept. Because I'm telling you, you're going to see, you would never see somebody like these, these people who disrespect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show no recognition like them. And they know. They're not like the Christian who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of ignorance. They know what they're doing. They know. They know they are in the wrong direction. But still they, they follow. يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So what does that mean? Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them here that it should fulfill your word. Fulfill the words and the agreement between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the agreement? That if I send the last messenger of Allah, you guys are going to accept. They promise. Get it? The last one they're going to listen to. You get an idea? All the prophets were like that. The Jews, since they're closer to the Prophet, their promise is quite strong. That if Muhammad comes, they're going to listen. What will be the result? What will be the reward for that? If they listen and they accept, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to relieve them from their shackles and difficulties. Get it? That's what he mentioned in Surah, Surah Al-Araf. Abu Aliya said, Ahdullahi ilayhim deenuhu al-Islam. The promise, the covenant between them and Allah SWT is to accept Islam and to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just like the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas, that Allah will relieve them from their difficulties. You know, you're going to see, inshallah. I'm going to qualify this statement and this part of the history, inshallah, through the Quran itself. You yourself, you will say, yeah, definitely they deserve. They deserve. Right. But all of those difficulties by the arrival of the Prophet, Allah, some of them are supposed to get relief from them. But they don't want to accept. That's why Allah SWT let them suffer internally. And He promised them 
In Surah Al-A'raf, he says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوَلَعْذَا He said he will never let them relax in this life. He get it? Since the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they will never relax. The only relief they get is to join the other kind of the human kinds and respect humanity. And come back and live with people in the state of peace. Islam never fights them. They fight. Back. And up to date, that should be the, the situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. So they got all of these relief, but they don't want to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time of uh, Musa alayhi salam, during the days of the Jews, if an ajasa touched the cloth of one of them, he has to catch the place. Get it? In our Sharia, we don't have that. If an ajasa touch your cloth, you wash it. You get it? With anything that can remove it. That's okay. The best opinion is the opinion of the scholars of the Hanafis that says you can remove the najasa with anything as long as the najasa is removed and the thing you are using to remove the najasa is tahir because they said al hukum yaduru ma illatihi wujudan wa adama the hukum the 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 ruling the 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 legal ruling goes with the with the the cause if the cause exists then the hukum will exist if the cause is, uh, I mean, gone, then the cause also will be gone. So you cannot pray to Allah SWT because you have najasa on you. But if najasa is gone, regardless of the, the means you use to remove the najasa, now you don't have najasa on you, that means you can pray to Allah SWT using that cloth because the najasa doesn't exist. That's leniency in the Sharia of Muhammad SAW. The Jew cannot do that. They have to cut the place. And that's simple actually because Cutting is just on, on the cloth. If the najasa touch the skin, they cannot wash. They have to scratch the skin. They have to remove that part from, from their body. That's how Allah SWT goes with them. They cannot eat every type of meat. They can eat some. You get it? They cannot eat the fat. The white meat, they can eat. Why can't they eat? Everyone can eat, but they, they, they cannot eat it. Why? Because of their own attitude. So all of these shackles and difficulties, the Prophet ﷺ is here to give them relief from that. So Allah says, Awfu bi ahdi, awfi bi ahdikum wa iya farhabun. Farhabun means be afraid of nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be afraid of nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by Allah, this is not just for them, but it's, it's for us also. Get it? You want to succeed and get and get relief in this life? Be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As scholars said, Man Allah, da'ana lahu kullu shay. Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is going to bow for him. Please, my brothers and sisters, remember this. Get it? The clear protection you have in this life is your taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They mention a scholar who reached the Tatar, the Mongols. You get it when they come to the Muslim territory. These people, they are like other creatures. I'm telling you, if you hear about that, that time, they're like other creatures. Great civilization, they step on them. Somebody said they do not even know that they step on them. They're so powerful. I mean, some of the great civilization that whenever they fight you, you just have to submit. When this uh, Tatar, the Mongols, comes and they just pass, it's like they don't meet nobody. That's why some scholars think that they are their juj or majuj. Because even the capital city of the Muslim territory, which was Baghdad, they put it to the ground. History says over two million people were slain on that day. The Nahar of the Dijla, the river, was uh, black. You get it because of the, the, the ink of the books. One of the biggest library that ever exists on earth was that Maktaba in Iraq, in Baghdad. They burn the book, they take them and they push them in the ocean and uh, in the river. It turns into uh, black because of the ink. These are the Mongols. The people are in the state of, uh, of fear during that time. They said a woman amongst them can just come and ask a group of Muslims to just wait here. And they will wait out of fear. She will come and slaughter them one after the other. Nobody can resist among them. So you can understand how much fear the Muslim community was, was engaged in. That's why 
the scholar said, regardless of what is going on in the Muslim Ummah, the Ummah is still on the right and on the blessings of Allah SWT because if you, I mean, remember the past, what we pass is far greater than what we are suffering nowadays. You get it? If you remember, recall some part of the history, the Ummah did not repeat that which happened in the past. But still Allah SWT let us recover. Which means nowadays also we can recover if we want. How to recover? We go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I just want you to remember who, is the, the, who are the Mongols, the Tatar. They mentioned that Shaykh al-Islam one day, he told the student he's going to give uh, nasiha to the, the Holako, the son of the Jankiz Khan. He said he's going to give khutb, uh, nasiha to him. Giving nasiha to Holako is equal to the graveyard. I don't want to say death, but equal to getting into the grave, straightforward. He, get, he said he's going to give nasiha to him. The student cried a lot because they know they're going to lose him. So the sheikh said, I'm going. They told him, don't go. They were crying. They were begging him not to go. He said, I have to go. They couldn't stop him. Some of them managed to go with him to see what will happen. At least they can narrate to us how that sheikh died. <laughs> Do you get it? So they followed him. <coughs> well, I, they, they mentioned that he went with a tight security in that place. They did not know how did they get into that place. Yes, something that you just uh, call what hidden asbab of Allah SWT, you also have no explanation. They found themselves in the middle of the palace of uh, Holako and he was there. The sheikh reached his position, I mean his place. They said he put his knees I mean, that, that, that person, he cannot even look at him. But he went to him and he connected his knees to the knees of that, uh, the whole Akko. And then he started giving him the nasiha. It's not nasiha like, we beg you, please stop killing us. No, it's not like that. No, he was talking to him in a way, some of those people who are witnessing the event, they say when he mentioned some of the words, they will bring their clothes and cover their face. Because they know after that words, at any moment, his head will fly. One of the statements I, I can remember, he told him, he said, Listen, you see, you claim to be a Muslim. Yet your father was a Kafir. He never said he is a Muslim. But he never tasted the Muslims and the believers what you're doing. You're worse than him. I mean, to say this to them. That's why they say we used to cover our, our face. And then later on, we just see, is he still alive? or? <laughs> you know what happened? It finished. The conversation and the debate finished uh, finish, and the man was just listening, couldn't do anything. After he finished, he said, Sheikh, what do you want now? He said, I want you to release all the Muslims you captured, not just this one's note. Every Muslim you captured, you have to release him. He said, done. And he released them all. And he let the Sheikh go back. Something funny happened on the way. While they are walking, the students who were with him, they said, Sheikh, until now we, we, we don't know how to believe that this happened. We're still thinking that this is a dream. Right? You know some situation you pinch yourself, they said, to make sure you're alive, right? <laughs> you're not sleeping. They said, Sheikh, we don't believe that this happened and also we still believe that there is a trick here. The man is just trying to plant an ambush for you, but he will get you on the way. They said, Sheikh, with all due respect, would you allow us to use another way? You use this way, but we're going <laughs> to <laughs> So they, the sheikh looked at them and told, and told them, okay, go, go ahead. I will go from the way I came. And sha'Allah, they were intercepted by the thieves. They got them, they robbed them, and he reached the home peacefully. Man <laughs> Allah, dan alahu kullu You fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is going to bow for you. You, get, you cannot be with Allah and get defeated at the same time. It doesn't go. Allah says, One of them was having a debate with the magician. magician, And he used to tell them uh, when they were there in the presence of the king, the king brought them, the sheikh and the magician, to come and debate to see who would be the strongest. So he told them, come. Because what they used to do, they cheat. 
they go and put the oil of the frogs or something that will prevent them from getting affected by the fire and they get into the fire for a while and come out of it nothing happened to them so the sheikh told them first of all go wash yourself with salt to remove the oil first and then come back for the debate they came he said light of fire they brought the fire he said kumbina nadkhul nar faman ihtarak fa alayhi la'natullah he said, let's both get into the fire and whoever get burnt, may Allah SWT curse him. They refused to go. Do you get it? They lost the debate and the king brought him very close. The student asked him afterward, he said, Sheikh, but honestly speaking, these guys, they use jinn. And they use this, they use that. If they get into the fire, nothing, I mean, there's nothing will happen to them. But you, you don't have any of this. Isn't it a suicide? You go to the fire. You know what he told them? He says, no. Wallahi, I believe that nothing will happen to me. He said, how are you so sure about that? He said, because I know Allah will never disappoint me. He said, last night I have been praying to Allah SWT, begging Allah SWT to support me in this event. So I come with yaqeen that I have to win. And if they go, I will go. And I do believe 100% it's going to be like Ibrahim's fire to me. That's the yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given some of the righteous people. But I just want you to have this in mind. If you fear Allah in this life, Allah will give you tranquility and protection. In the hadith of Thabit bin Qais bin Shammas, when uh, he was crying, thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant him with the revelation of the ayah that says, لا ترفو أسواتكم فوق صوت النبي he thought he raised his voice against, I mean, over the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and because of this, he's going to hell. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him. He asked somebody to go and tell him, no, he will not go to hell. He will say, Ishu Hamidan, Wayamutu Shahidan, Wayadkhul Jannah. Remember, he went to the house after the revelation of this ayah, cried a lot out of the belief that he's going to hell because he raised up his voice against the voice of the Prophet But look at the result of that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, go to him and tell him, no, he will not go to hell. But he will live a very successful life. And he will be killed as a shaheed. Successful life, shahada, and jannah. With confirmation of jannah. Not just shaheed, but he will go to jannah. You know what the scholar said? He said, وَهَكَذَا if you fear Allah's part in this life, Allah will give you peace and tranquility in this life. Get it? So let's all reflect upon this verse. Uh, Allah's part says, عليكم, He says, Fear nobody except me, Allah says. Allah says, Believe in that which I have revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which testified that which is with you. Quran never go against a Torah. Don't become the first person to disbelieve in that which is given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because they know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than the Arabs. Allah SWT is reminding them, don't become the first person to reject the truth after knowing that this is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَإِيَّا فَاتَّقُوا And don't you ever sell the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with little amount of money. You get it? You exchange the truth with the dunya. It means you sell the truth to get the filthy things of this dunya. And that's what they do. They wrote the book, they gain a lot of money. Even nowadays also by reaching that book, only Allah knows how much they're gaining. And all of these books are false. They're not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Allah says, Woe unto them. Those people who write in a book with their own hands and then they claim that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah reminded them that they shouldn't be the first person to reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger.
they should believe in the Quran, they should believe in that promise that they promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if Muhammad is to come, they will be the first people to accept him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa taqun. And you should follow nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa of Allah means to believe in Allah and to practice the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Fear Allah through what? Through practicing the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's all for today, inshallah. I decided to have a 30 minute class. Inshallah, then I give you rest. Barakallahu feekum. Inshallah, next week the class will resume bi idhnillahi ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tibidah.